everything started here, in fact. Uh, I was born, raised and educated here in Tirana. It was a hard period of time in terms of economic conditions, freedom, but uh, it was full of illusion about uh, learning and for me also for the science, to be involved in science. I was lucky, in fact, uh, to have uh, great professors in school, from elementary school to university, great professors in science, which is really very important to educate and give you this first love for the science. And uh, everything started, in fact, at the uh, uh, Faculty of Natural Science here in Tirana. I had great professors. I would mention each of them. In fact, uh, I would have assigned even each of them to any university in the world for their preparation, their uh, methodology and capacity to, to teach chemistry and to teach, first of all, the love for science. I finished there in this university, uh, Bachelor in Industrial Chemistry, and it was the moment to decide what to do. And I was lucky because uh, I was assigned also lecturer at this university, and uh, the problem was to decide what topic? And this is very important if you want to be involved in science. So one of my professors told me, uh, look, Arben, there is a box here. We just received this from Hungary, Budapest, in fact. Uh, and uh, see what is there. There is an instrument. We don't know, but probably maybe with interest. Imagine you have finished uh, the university and uh, you need to deal with your future, your science, and you don't know what is there. So I opened this box and saw that there was a sensor inside. And this is called ion selective electrode and should be connected to electrical reader. And it was a very interesting instrument to do measurements for quality of water, clinical analysis and any other analysis. But I didn't know that. So, a marathon of efforts started, first of all, reading, learning what is this technology, speaking with professors. I was lucky because, I'm repeating this always, we had very great professors in my university, and some of them just turned back from studies abroad. I had not this possibility at that time. And uh, I was trying to understand this instrument. I was also in contact with some laboratories in Tirana, clinical laboratory or environmental agricultural laboratory, and trying to see how this device can be used in different fields. And this was very important. I managed also to build my own sensors with the conditions we have at the time in Tirana. And I was very lucky to have these children sensors that were working fine. And this was the, the really very, very satisfactory for me because you understand, but also you are able to do something new. You are able to apply this for something interesting. And this started, in fact, as I said, a lot of collaborations, but the environment, the, the, this kind of science we're doing that time was really very difficult in terms of the capacities, infrastructure. So I started to contact and to build my own network of collaborators, which is very important for a scientist when you start your career. And imagine this time, no internet, no email. We should write the letters, send this by mail and wait like a month to receive a response. And uh, lucky, I got a response from one of the most important professors working in this area. And he was, in fact, the father of ion selective electrodes, Professor Pungor in Hungary, who invited me in his lab. I spent some time there. But afterwards, I was looking for better conditions, better laboratories, and I did my research also in Greece. I moved to Italy, got in a prestigious scholarship, then in Spain, United States, 
with Greek professors, Professor Karianis in Greece, Professor Maka in Italy, Professor Wang in the United States, one of the most important professors in the field of sensors, and that Professor Allegret in Spain. So this was, as I said, a lot of efforts, but very lucky to meet and be able to work with such great names that uh, that time, of course, was unimaginable in Tirana to think to have the possibility to work with such professors. So it was a moment in my life and always when you do your career as any, any profession that something depend also on external factors. I, I was in the United States in a moment when nanotechnology emerged. And this was very important for me, being also in one of the best laboratories working in the field of nanotechnology when this started in the world. So I took this opportunity very seriously and started to work with uh, a, a very known professor there. Curiously, the first weeks I was there, I was working with the same materials that I got started in Albania, in Tirana. These were some simple materials that we used to build these sensors. But when I was in Tirana, I was not able to see what these sensors had inside this material. But in the United States, the difference was that we had these big microscopes and we were able to observe what was inside these materials. Yes, it was really very amazing to, to learn and to be in a, such a very amazing field, nanotechnology, which is considered the technology of the century. But uh, during this time, I started also collaboration with many countries. And uh, it was a moment that in Spain also started, of course, always uh, a little bit later, but also merging nanotechnology. So I was asked together with uh, some of international colleagues to uh, found my own research group in Spain because I was also Spanish citizen at that time. So I turned back in Spain and uh, together with uh, other colleagues, we founded this uh, important uh, Catalan Institute of Nanoscience and Nanotechnology in Barcelona, which, is, which was since the beginning one of the most important research centers in Southern Europe I would say now also in the world, well known in the field of nanotechnology. So this was also another period of, of my life to build my own research group, because if you like to work in science and uh, have a career in, this, in such a field, uh, you need also to build your own research group. And I was very lucky that uh, uh, this research group also called Mercoci Group uh, is doing very well. This is a very multidisciplinary group of people, almost 50 nationalities all over the world, work, working together in the field of nanoscience and nanotechnology applied in this kind of sensors and biosensors. This is a well-known now group, one of the pioneers groups also in the field of nanobiosensors, trying to do development of new devices, application of new devices in different fields from safety, security, industrial application, but overall for diagnostic, for health applications, application of sensors in cancer diagnostics. And even recently, we are working in COVID-19 related biomarkers with interest for COVID-19 uh, uh, diagnostics. Our What we are doing is developing alternative techniques to conventional techniques that we have in the laboratories with the idea to have these tiny devices able to work even in the field at home and without need for any expertise. So the same thing as people suffering diabetes are using when they measure, for example, glucose in blood. Why not to do the same thing to measure many other things, including cancer biomarkers or for other diseases or even to control very rapidly COVID-19 status. And in fact, one of the developments of the group is related to uh, COVID-19. 
We are developing different technologies in our group as medical devices, wearable, but many other applications with interest for monitoring of uh, contaminants, uh, for food plant control, integrating sensors in different uh, uh, places, uh, in, even in smartphone. Everybody has a smartphone, so you can use your smartphone even as a sensor. So it was really very, very interesting, and uh, uh, the group is doing fantastic very well, and I'm really very proud about uh, the work my collaborators are doing. And the nice thing, this family of scientists is working together, collaborating. They are respecting each other, they are helping each other, they love each other, but at the same time, they compete. And this is in a good sense, because in science you should be ambitious and you should deliver new ideas, you should uh, uh, develop new technologies. But uh, during this time, I have been, of course, uh, with a lot of commitments, uh, traveling around the world, trying to get funding from European community, being in a lot of uh, consortiums, collaborations, uh, uh, new technologies, uh, developing also two spin-off companies in our group. Uh, but during this time, always, I've been in contact with Albania. And this, in fact, uh, uh, not only because, first of all, for, for, for the family, for my, my parents, my, my big family, part of them here, but also because I owed to this country, to uh, university, what I got. So I have been in contact always with Albania since many years, trying to visit my colleagues, see what they are doing in their laboratories. Uh, and in fact, I was excited to see that Colleagues here in Albania, in Kosovo, in North Macedonia, were doing very well in some very interesting areas related to nanotechnology. And this was really very, very interesting for me. And overall, I would say that looking to the people here working in such a very imp important area, in very, very restricted, limited conditions in terms of infrastructure and other that we know very well, is something that uh, impresses you because uh, you cannot compare this with one who is working in a place where you have everything. So this is something that uh, should be uh, appreciated. And uh, based on that, we started to get together and uh, thanks to the Academy of Science of Albania, being also a member of uh, such academy, we founded NanoAlp. NanoAlp is the institute, the center, uh, the Albanian center of nanoscience and nanotechnology, uh, getting together 23 groups uh, in Albanian universities from, Tirana, from Albania, Kosovo, and uh, uh, North Macedonia. Uh, NanoAlp did a good starting since two years. Since the first year, we went also together in Japan in the most important event of nanotechnology where NanoAlb was presented for the first time. And recently, we are also organizing the most important event of nanotechnology in Tirana, Trends in Nanotechnology. I'm really very happy, very proud of this event, the most important the most important event of nanotechnology and I would say in level of science never done so far in Albania where the most prestigious uh, professors, scientists all over the world are coming in during 4 to 8th of October in Tirana and I'm really very proud of that. Some family and friends ask me why, how it's possible, are you sure that this Congress should be done in Albania? Is Albania prepared for nanotechnology uh, congress? And um, my response was yes. Yes, because Albania is a beautiful country and I like very much to show my country to uh, foreign colleagues, my international community of colleagues and friends, but also because scientists in Albania need collaboration, they need contacts with uh, uh, colleagues wo working abroad, and overall the new generation is very much interested to be in contact with scientists and looking for their dreams, so this is uh, very, very important. Science is collaboration, science is passion, science is, is related to hard working. 
But science needs support from the government, from all the society. But of course, we know very well that science always has paid back uh, the received support, and we are uh, conscient about that so far, of uh, whatever we have so far, our well-being, safety and security, our life be is due to the science, if we think deeply on what has happened so far. But of course, science uh, should uh, be better evaluated and it is very important to be in the same level with uh, education, health, agriculture and other important pillars that sustain modern country and of course our country that is pretending, projecting to enter in European Union since many years. Mm -hmm.